Let's record something. We're back again. Uh, if you didn't see my video from the other day, I put it at the beginning of a couple patches that do frozen sounds. If you want to check that out, uh, I realize I haven't published a lot recently. I sort of took the summer off, summer vacation. Um, so I'm kept building patches, so I've got a bunch of stuff to sort of burn through. We'll see how that goes uh, and keeping the burn out low. Um, but today I have, I think, a fun little patch um, called Layers, and it was sort of inspired by patterns of erosion. Um, the idea is that you have sort of a, it's a looper. The idea is that you have sort of a main loop, uh, which you record here with the first stop switch. Uh, and then you have two sort of uh, substrata loops, is what I call them, that sometimes get, you know, due to the erosion, uh, <laughs> show through uh, because they're side-chained by the main loop through a compressor. Um, and so you get these uh, sounds where, you know, you've got this sort of predominant loop sound and then these other things that come through when it gets quieter. Uh, it's, I think, a nice dynamic way of getting some interesting movement uh, out of a, a pretty sort of simple foundation. Um, and you can record, the way I use it most often is you can sync these loops these substrata loops, the recording process to the first uh, stomp switch, or you can use this UI button if you're using it on Zebu, for instance. Um, and you record the same thing into all three buffers. These substrata loops have controls for the reverse chance, and this is based on per cycle. So I created a janky kind of end of cycle trigger for the looper um, by sending a noise burst into a third, th uh, uh, third because they're in stereo. Everything's in stereo here, worth pointing out. Um, there's a, a third loop that gets recorded when the stereo pair gets recorded. Uh, that has a noise burst on it, and that goes into an envelope follower. You don't hear it, but the envelope follower, each time the cycle or the loop cycles, goes high. Um, and that is used for a couple of things in the patch. The first is this reverse chance. So anytime uh, the loop cycles, the substrata loopers uh, can um, change which playback direction they're going based on this chance. So if it's at zero, they play back forward. If it's at one, they play back in reverse. I've used this process on a lot of other looper uh, patches, so you may have seen it before. There's pitch, and the pitch is recalculated again at the beginning of each cycle. So uh, I did that so that if you wanted to change the pitch, you know, if you were trying to sort of perform this patch, um, you could do that without hearing those in-between pitches between the place you are and the place you want to go. So these can be re-pitched. The main loop is pretty limited. I didn't want to 
overcomplicate it um, or chance some weird mess up with the end of cycle trigger. So it can play in reverse if you want, but I didn't get into pitch and all that sort of stuff. Um, so, but these can be repitched, which is nice again if you're recording the same material into the buffers. Um, and then we have this last control. Uh, which is pretty important. It's called the start mod range. And mod in the sense that the start position of the loops is modulated. Random, it's not really mod, it's randomly selected from a range beginning at zero, the start point of this loop, uh, up to whatever you set this to. And, and this control is twofold. It sets both that range, but it also sets the length. So the higher this number goes, the more you get these sort of granular elements, um, little snippets of sound that get repeated throughout the, the playback, which I like a lot, but you might not. Um, and you can set these the start range to a smaller number, and that will have more of like an echo effect or, or like these fragments of your loop that get um, you know, sort of re, you know, refocus throughout the playback. If you set it all the way to zero, it'll just play back along with the loop, which might be nice, but there are easier ways to get a three track looper out there. Um, I'm just going to go through all the controls real quick. So that's most of them. Uh, next to this main loop control, uh, we have a tremolo. So again, because this is using a sidechain approach, I wanted something that could um, modulate the, the volume of the, the loop that is sidechaining everything to sort of change up the dynamics throughout. Um, so we have rate and depth, those are pretty standard, but then we have a stereo spread amount, basically. And what this does is it moves the LFOs out of phase until at one, the left and right channel are 180 degrees out of phase. But if you use some points in between, you get some sort of different uh, stereo-ness. Um, be careful with the 180 degree out of phase thing because it can get kind of seasicky. Um, and then we have the controls for the compressor with threshold, release, and ratio. Down here we have a position modulation depth. This is a triangle LFO that'll sweep through the position uh, of these substrata loops. Um, which can add some variation in each cycle. Uh, and then we have a tap tempo for that. I decided to make it kind of free running, but it, it um, will be reset at the beginning of each loop. Um, and I should mention that this start point is changed randomly each time the loop cycles. That's the range. Uh, let's keep going before I get bogged down in nonsense. Uh, there's a plate reverb at the end of the chain, and then we have level controls. Uh, there's no dry level control um, for a fixed loop thing. I think you have other means of controlling the dry level before it reaches this box. So. It was a CPU thing. Uh, I had some other features that were causing this to clip. Uh, and so I removed those or removed the dry level. I sort of said, let's play it safe. Um, a couple of other little things. There's a, the loops are limited to 16 seconds. That's another RAM CPU uh, Thing I ran up against. I, I could get all almost all of them up to 32 loops or 32 seconds, but not all of them. And I figured best be uniform. Um, so this timer will start to flash through the colors of the UI button 
Um, you'll see it in action when I start recording. Basically, it begins at white, and when you get to red, you're almost at the end of the loop buffer. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, and there will also be a loop start, uh, beginning of cycle, when the beginning of cycle trigger goes, this little uh, pixel will light up. And that is the controls. Again, these stomp switches control the three buffers, but if you have them synced, this one will, will control all three of the recording cycles. And for those of you who are doing MIDI at home, I starred the flip-flops that you would want to send a, a message to if you wanted to put this on a you know, on a MIDI controller instead of using these stomp switches. Um, so, you know, if you're looking to midify this, that's the way to go about it uh, with a momentary signal. So that's the, you know, the walkthrough. Um, let's hear what it sounds like. Okay, I had a bit of a technical problem there. Um, hopefully it's cleared up. My interface wasn't talking to OBS, stops doing that sometimes, it's wonderful. Um, but we should have a, a kalimba sound from this app that's been on my phone for forever. My phone is forever old, uh, called DM1, which is a little sample-based pattern thing that I like playing around with, had for a forever. Newer apps just drain the battery right away, so I just use what I've had for ages. Uh, sounds okay. Um, I'm going to record a loop and, and hopefully you'll sort of hear what's going on. But I also recorded when I was setting up for this and playing around with the cello sample, I recorded something I really liked. So I'm going to put that on at, at the end of the video and probably at the beginning of the video because I usually put some sound samples there. But uh, we'll hear what's going on. Um, so, uh, layers. Let's record something. around with the tremolo and compressor settings here. Stomp switch is being weird. 
No, it's not. Uh, I think that's probably an issue on my end, or maybe just with how I'm pressing it. But that's uh, an example of layers. Um, I think you sort of hopefully get the idea of the way in which it can create these, you know, uh, sort of a static loop with some evolving, changing, dynamic um, accompaniments uh, that sort of fill out the sound and you know, particularly if you have something, you know, the, what I recorded into it was pretty spare, right? Um, and so those other loops sort of filled in the gaps, which was the idea behind this patch. Um, so that's it. Uh, if you check it out, great. If you don't, I don't know why you'd be watching to this point in the video, but if you check it out and you like it, please like it on patch storage. And this is something I'm really sort of encouraging people to do. If you like one of my patches, if you like someone else's patch, uh, show the love, show the community that it's a good patch. Um, let people know. Uh, obviously comments and, and all that are greatly appreciated, but it's a, a pretty good shorthand to the rest of the community this is something worth checking out. Uh, so I appreciate it if you, you know, take a couple minutes to go through, just like some of the patches you've downloaded and enjoyed using. Um, so that's layers. I hope you have a good week and I'll see you later.